What is up, everybody? Welcome to um, a YouTube video. Um, today's video is basically talking about the last dance. Um, if you're a sports fan, if you're a basketball fan, if you're a Jordan fan, if you're a Bulls fan, um, you probably tuned in to watch the first two episodes. Um, and to be honest, I could have watched all of the episodes, all 10 episodes. They should have just released them. I don't know why they decided not to. Um, but, you know, we'll suffer for the five weeks that we have. So we got four weeks left. Um, basically, the beginning was an introduction to the season, the 97-98 season. Um, I actually was fortunate enough to watch that season. Um, maybe a lot of people right now are, are too young or, or don't remember um, or didn't even watch any of, of Jordan. But I got to watch... A little bit of him, fortunately, and this is one of the seasons I got to watch. Um, but as far as the the documentary, I knew a lot about the stuff that are, that um they showed. You know, they recapped Jordan how he got to the Bulls, all his struggles with the Bulls, um, his injury, um, and things like that. They didn't really jump in that much into the season, um. Then they talked about Scottie Pippen, so I did know about the, you know, growing up. I was I was little. I was young. I didn't understand salaries. I didn't understand contracts. You know, I thought, hey, they're winning. Like when when people started talking about, oh, they're gonna trade Pippen or Pippen's not coming back. You know, I thought like, why would they do that? Why why would they mess up a good thing that they have? You know, I didn't understand that he wasn't getting paid enough. But on the other hand. I also thought that he, they just didn't want to pay him. I didn't know he signed a contract. So that was something new that I learned. Um, I didn't know to the extent the feud that they had um, where, you know, Jordan and Pippen were both, you know, basically bashing Jerry Krause. Um, I do feel that in a way he kind of deserved it for the way he was treating them. I feel like, you know, telling Phil Jackson that this is your last year, it doesn't matter if you go um, 82 and 0, um, you're breaking up a dynasty, you know, you had just won two in a row, it was your, coming off your fifth win, and, you know, that's kind of a slap in the face, it's like, I just performed this job for you, I just did this for you, and, you know, you, you, you're telling me that I'm done, basically, and then... In a way, he kind of retired the greatest player of all time. I feel like maybe, maybe they don't come back and they win, you know, but like th they wanted to keep defending what was theirs, what they earned um, against whoever and until it was taken from them and no one really took it from them. I still want to believe that they could have won the next season because it was only 50 games. It was a shortened season. Um, if Michael wouldn't have cut his finger you know, that's a whole different story. Or maybe it would have been okay by then. I don't know. Um, but I feel like if they would have just kept the same group with the experience that they had, a, a, sh a shortened season, and then in the playoffs, you know, the toughest competition would have been New York, which you saw what happened to them against the Spurs in the finals. You know, maybe they beat, they got past Indiana by luck. Um, but there was really not that tough of a, a challenge, I think. Um, in the East for that that year, that following year. And then, of course, the Spurs ended up winning, whatever. But I feel like the Bulls could have beat the Spurs. You know, they even with Tim Duncan only in the second year, you know, that's not enough experience. They just played a, a depleted Knicks team that didn't have Patrick Ewing. You know, Marcus Camby was hurt. Uh, Larry Johnson wasn't his fullest. Spreewell was, you know, I guess him and Houston, Allen Houston were probably the best thing that they the Knicks had but so that to me tells me that the Bulls could have gotten enough together um to win that season and then there's all this sort of debate of you know why Jordan retired the first time if they could have kept winning I I don't know I, I as a Bulls fan as a, as a Jordan fan I would I would say that they could have beaten Hakeem Olajuwon in the Houston Rockets. Although it would have been tough because he was a post player, but then 
you know, you have Jordan, so who's guarding Jordan? You know, it, it kind of goes both ways. They, they like to say the Bulls, you know, weren't the best defenders, whatever. Um, and for bigs, I guess, down low, um, you know, they had problems with, like, Shaq. But they beat Shaq. You know, they lost that one time when Jordan came back. But, you know, if you know the history, you know the history. But I'm just saying that they still won championships, you know, and they played, you know, Carl Malone. You know, it's this... It's just the same thing. If you have uh, someone that you can't guard, there's someone on the other team that you can't guard. So no one was stopping Pittman. No one was definitely stopping Jordan. Um, so if he would have played all through, who knows? Who knows what would have happened? I think Jordan just needed the break, and that's fine. So he retired. Maybe he was forced out. We'll never know. I don't think. I don't think Jordan's ever going to come out and say if it was the gambling problem or not. Um, so it's interesting to know. It's it's fun to talk about. It's it's just fun to talk about it's a debate that can go on forever you know and and, and that's and that's that's fun but like I said I've never would have I would never bet against Jordan in the finals or whatever you know once he made it there he showed six times that you know he was gonna do anything he could to win um so going back to the season um you have um Jordan and Pippen you know Pippen started off the season and on at odds with the management because like he said he needed to do surgery he didn't want to f his summer up um so he didn't really care for the season because they had already basically wrote him off and said um we're done so jordan felt i think jordan was bothered by it but you know i mean what could he do let's be real scotty pippen deserved more money there's no denying that but at the same time jordan i looked up his contracts and he signed an eight-year, $25 million contract, which is, yes, $8 million more than, than Scotty for a seven-year, but at the same time, you know, come on, Jordan proved it. So, yes, yeah, Scotty should have gotten more money, but he signed the contract. If if I'm a business person and I hire you to do a contract or I, hire, I give you a contract and you agree to that, it's hard for me to take back, you know, and say, I'm going to pay you more because you're doing a good job. Especially when there's someone else above you that is, you know, arguably carrying you, helping you do this job. Maybe in the time that Jordan was gone, he could have gotten an increase. But, you know, they all advise him not to sign the contract. You know, isn't this what his agent is for? His agent should have been looking at, you know, we can get more money. Maybe it should have been a three or four or five year deal. Back then it was different. You know, now 17 million players that sh don't deserve that can make that in two or three years you know and it's 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 sucks to see but he made up his money and he knew it you know i i looked up the, the salaries and he actually ended up making more than jordan <laughs> like 20 million more than jordan um for his playing career so i mean you can't really complain maybe he he could have made more but that's the same you could say that about Every player in history, you could say that about Jordan. Like I said, he made eighty nine million with the Bulls. Yeah, he had um, endorsements and and Nike and and Jordan and all that, and selling shoes. So that helped him. But at the same time, you know, it it, it doesn't translate to what he deserved on the court. Um, so it started off. You know, obviously Jordan was not happy. I remember that season. I remember them not playing well. It was just like frustrating, just like Scotty, when you coming back and then all their trade talks. And I had a teacher telling me, no, Scotty's gone. Like, I felt like I was the only Bulls fan, you know, growing up. There was no other kids. I don't even think kids probably watched. Like I said, I was too little. I should not have been watching games and being as invested as I was. But it was a good time for me. It was it was a great time. I'm, I can't play basketball for, you know, whatever. I shouldn't have no business playing basketball. But I love the sport. That's the first sport that I love. You know, and the memories of me watching games with my mom, you know, going to get fast food and then coming home and, and we'd watch games, you know. Um, it was just a nice thing for me and, and it brings back good memories. So watching all this stuff is, just, you know, bringing out the little kid in me. You know, I want to sit in front of the TV again. I want to watch this, you know, be on every word that Jordan says, that Pippen says, everybody, you know, and, and it's, it's cool um, to relive the season you know but it was tough it was I remember and that was the first time you know watching the Bulls or watching Jordan that I was like nervous you know maybe they didn't feel it or he didn't feel it but you know 
it wasn't it didn't start off good at all um but they ended up what 62 and 20 or 16 22 one of those two um and we all know the rest is history you know but i felt jordan did feel a little bit um not disrespected but you know if you say you're gonna do something you know you have to follow through and Scottie Pippen was not interested in following through. And he had his odds with management. Um, and that's that's what shocking was, you know, to me was to hear that how vocal he was and how they attacked Jerry Krause to his face. And you heard a couple lines there by Jordan, you know, making fun of um, Jerry to his face that, you know, and then Pippen, you know, to for Phil Jackson to say, because he did not like Jerry Krause either. They were probably the number one odds. And for Phil Jackson to say that he had to tell, you know, Pippen, like, hey, tone it down a little bit. I wish I could hear what he was saying. That's, I don't know if they're going to show that maybe eventually, but that's, (laughs) that's crazy to me. You know, this is your boss and I'm surprised he didn't get traded or, or they didn't get rid of him, you know, right there in the season. He said he was never going to play for the Chicago Bulls again. I don't know if maybe he had a change of heart because Jordan, you know, I feel like that's what Jordan was maybe frustrated with because they all agreed to like come back, you know, to do it again. Otherwise he probably would have just retired and Phil Jackson would have said, I'm not coming back and who knows. But so, um, it is just crazy to me to think that an owner or a GM, you know, this, this, the owner allowed the GM to do this. That is crazy to me. You know, he's from Chicago. Jerry Krause is from Chicago, born in Chicago, died in Chicago. So I don't understand why you wouldn't want to give your fans, you know, he always talked about the fans, but yet you're taking the greatest thing that we had, you know, winning Cubs, winning uh, the Bears, weren't winning White Sox, weren't winning uh, Blackhawks, okay, whatever. Um, But we had a winning team. So like why you want to mess that up? I don't know. It sucks that Reinsdorf allowed that to happen. Um, I feel like he should have been a mediator in there somewhere and just kind of, you know, um, squashed some of the beef sooner. Um, But, you know, it's kind of tough to, you know, I don't fault Pippen for expecting more money, but it's like, how? You know, you signed the contract. You didn't have to sign it. They told you not to. And you see what happens, you know. So I definitely feel like you should value yourself. Um, now that I don't think that can happen now, so I guess disregard that. But if you're if you're trying to, um, you know, do something for somebody and you got to work, you know, value your work. I guess <laughs> that's what we can remember because that's probably one of the worst contracts, you know, in NBA history or in sports in general. You know, for as good as he was to sign that contract was. It's pretty crazy. And now you see players, like I said, they make so much money and they aren't even a fourth the good of Scottie Pippen compared to who he was. So, but yeah, so I'm excited about the next episodes. We'll do three and four after this, and that's going to be uh, Dennis Rodman and I believe Phil Jackson. Um, so yeah, if, if you like this, um, I guess podcast, you could call it, or uh, um, reaction video to the last dance you know stay tuned for next week's episode and we're going to talk about episodes three and four so if you like this smash a like button leave a comment are you watching the last dance are you a fan of michael jordan are you a fan of the bulls um let me know we'll see you guys in the next one peace